G'day and salutations. Today's briefing, China's Fighting Vehicles, a comprehensive guide. This briefing will list the main combat vehicles and some unusual ones across the PLA ground force, marines and airborne troops. Instead of covering equipment by types, I'll describe the equipment as used by formations. In order, the sections are heavy combined arms brigades and other armoured formations, the medium combined arms brigades and other motorised units, amphibious units, the light combined arms brigades, airborne units, and finally, independent artillery brigades. I won't cover air defence vehicles outside of those found in the combined arms brigades. The latest numbers in inventory, including in reserves, are taken from the International Institute for Strategic Studies Military Balance 2024. If I've missed any significant vehicles, please let me know in the comments. We'll start with the combat vehicles in the heavy combined arms brigades and other tank and mechanised infantry formations that sit outside the group army structure. First, the tanks. The ZTZ-99 series are the most capable PLA tanks and began entering service in 2001. In weight terms, they fit above the Soviet Russian designs but below the Western designs. The latest version is the ZTZ-99A. Armed with a 125mm gun, it utilises a carousel autoloader. There are around 700 of the latest ZTZ-99As and 600 of the earlier ZTZ-99 base models. Prior to these, the ZTZ-96 series were the PLA's primary main battle tanks. The final evolution of the preceding Type 88 series, these began entering service in 1997. It introduced the 125mm gun as the new main armament for PLA tanks and included the Russian style carousel autoloader. The latest version, the ZTZ 99.6A, or by some sources the 96B, is the current mainstay of the PLA's main battle tank force. There are around 1,500 of the A version and 1,000 of the base ZTZ 96 version. The precursor to the ZTZ-96 was the Type 80 project, with the domestic in-service version being designated the ZTZ-88. The most capable of the series is the ZTZ-88A, which is armed with an overlong 105mm gun at 62 calibres in length and serviced by a manual loader. There are around 300 of the ZTZ-88As and Bs in inventory. Note there are also around 600 older main battle tanks in reserve, including around 200 ZTZ-79s and around 400 of the ZTZ-59 series. The PLA's MBT force is augmented by a new light tank, the ZTQ-15. Entering service around 2018, it weighs 36 tonnes with additional armour package and is designed for operations in complex terrain including mountains, jungles and swamps. In a first for the PLA, its 105mm gun uses a bustle autoloader. Currently, there are around 500 in service. The PLA's primary infantry fighting vehicle, or IFE, is the ZBD-04 series. The latest version is the ZBD-04A, which weighs in at around 24 tonnes. Armed with 100mm and 30mm guns, it can fire anti-tank guided missiles through its main gun. The ZBD-04 is a lighter, earlier version, weighing in at around 20 tonnes, but has the same armament. There are around 2,000 of the ZBD-04As in service, and around 400 of the base 04 model. The original PLA IFV is the ZBD-86 family, which is derived from the Soviet BMP-1. The most capable version is the ZBD-86A, which is equipped with a one-man turret armed with a 30mm gun and one launch rail for the HJ-73 anti-tank guided missile. 
There are around 650 of the ZBD 86As in service and around 600 of the original 86 model. Although not by a fees, the Armoured Force is also equipped with APCs in the form of the ZSD 89 family. In service with second line and reserve formations, the chassis is utilised for a wide range of supporting vehicles. There are around 1,750 in inventory, with another around 500 of the older ZSD 63 APCs in store. An important combat capability in the armoured units are the combat reconnaissance vehicles. Supporting the PLA's main battle tanks and IFVs is a specialist variant of the ZBD-04 family. This version is armed with a turreted 30mm gun and carries a dismountable reconnaissance element. The vehicle is equipped with a telescopic mast fitted with a ground surveillance radar and electro-optical sight. It also carries and can launch its own intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance UAV by way of a folding ramp located behind the turret. There is also a reconnaissance vehicle without turret and not carrying a dismounted reconnaissance element. Found in the Combined Arms Brigade's reconnaissance battalion, it has a longer telescopic mast. To support these, the PLA's armoured formations have a variety of artillery support, the smallest of which is the PLZ-10 tracked armoured mortar vehicle. Armed with a 120mm gun mortar, it has a direct firing range exceeding 1,000 metres and an indirect firing range of up to 13 kilometres. There are around 100 in service. One of the earliest self-propelled guns in PLA service is the PLZ-89. In service since the early 1990s, it is armed with a 32 calibre 122mm gun. They are still in limited service with larger numbers in reserve, totalling around 700. The PLZ-89s have largely been replaced by the PLZ-07. In service since around 2009, it is armed with a 120mm gun, which is the standard calibre for the Combined Arms Brigade's organic gun howitzer batteries. Based on a modified ZBD-04 chassis, there are around 550 in service. Augmenting the guns are the multiple launch rocket systems. One of the earliest tracked multiple launch rocket systems employed by the PLA is the PHZ-89. Firing 122mm rockets, it carries 40 ready to fire in a single structure and an additional 40 reloads in a container at the front of the vehicle. There are around 375 in inventory. The newer PHZ-11 is replacing the PHZ-89. While still using the 122mm caliber rockets, the standard caliber of the Combined Arms Brigade's MLRS batteries, it launches them from two 20-cell pods. The PHZ-11 is reloaded by replacing spent pods with pre-filled pods loaded by a crane from the resupply vehicles. For self-propelled anti-tank guided missile capability, the armoured formations are equipped with the AFT-10. Based on the ZBD-04 chassis, it is armed with eight HJ-10 long-range anti-tank guided missiles which can reach out to around 10 kilometres. An earlier attempt to provide the PLA's armoured formations with an anti-tank capability appeared in the form of the PTZ-89 tank destroyer. Interestingly for the PLA, the European standard 120mm gun was chosen. The 50 calibre 120mm gun was a capable weapon, but with the development of the 125mm tank gun, and improvements in the PLA's ATGMs, the system has been replaced in operational service and is now in reserve. In terms of air defence, the armoured units are equipped with a variety of systems, the most numerous of which is the PGZ-04A. Armed with four 25mm guns with an effective range of around 2,500 metres and four short-range surface-to-air missiles with a range of around 6,000 metres, this system would also provide a useful capability against drones. There are around 270 in service. 
Perhaps better known is the PGZ-09. Reminiscent of the German Gepard, it is armed with two 35mm guns with an effective range of around 4,000 metres. It apparently can also be equipped with short-range surface-to-air missiles, but I haven't seen an operational vehicle so equipped. There are around 120 of these in service. Complementing the self-propelled anti-aircraft guns is the missile air defence element of the Armoured Forces, which is based around the HQ-17. Mounted on a tracked vehicle, this is armed with eight missiles with a range of up to 15 kilometres. There are around 200 in service. The PLA has a wide range of armoured combat support vehicles as part of the AIDS armoured formations. Significant among them, as we've seen in recent conflicts, are the armoured mine clearing vehicles. Based on components from the ZTZ-96 main battle tank, the vehicle is equipped with mine ploughs and mine clearing line charges. The other engineer support vehicle found in these units is the GCZ-112 armoured engineer vehicle. It is equipped with a flexible dozer blade and a rotatable extendable arm fitted with a bucket and claw. A number of armoured recovery vehicles available to the armoured formations, the oldest of which is based on the ZTZ-79 main battle tank chassis. A newer armoured recovery vehicle is based on components from the ZTZ-96 main battle tank. Both these vehicles are equipped with a crane, winch and A-frame towing attachment. The newest armoured recovery vehicle system is based on the ZTQ-15 light tank chassis and is designed to operate in mountains, jungles and swamps. It is also equipped with a crane, winch and A-frame towing attachment. And finally, within the armoured units, is the bridge lane capability. The latest PLA track capability utilises a horizontal laying system like the German Leguan, rather than a scissor laying system as found on the US M1074 armoured vehicle laying bridge. The most numerous formations found in the PLA are the heavy motorised or wheeled mechanised units, also known as medium combined arms formations. These are slightly heavier formations than the US Striker Brigades and are found in both the Ground Force and Marines. The main direct fire capability of these units is provided by the ZTL-11 assault gun. It is armed with a manually loaded 105mm gun which can also launch anti-tank guided missiles. There are around 1,250 in service with the Ground Force and Marines. The ZTL-11 is being supplemented by a new assault gun, which has recently been seen. This vehicle is also armed with a 105mm gun and may have a bustle autoloader. Uh, see separate briefing on this vehicle linked below. Working with the assault guns are the wheeled IFVs, the most numerous of which is the ZBL-08. Armed with a 30mm gun and two HJ-73 anti-tank guided missiles, it carries a full dismount section or squad. There are around 3,400 in service with the ground force and marines. The ZBL-08 family also includes a version with a slightly raised hull which is employed as an APC, logistics support vehicle or ambulance. There is also a new wheeled infantry fighting vehicle, possibly designated the ZBL-19 on which the new assault gun is based. This appears to be equipped with a remote control turret and includes four anti-tank guided missiles mounted in an elevatable box. Uh, see separate briefing on this vehicle linked below. An older but still capable IFV is the ZSL-92 family. The B version is fitted with the same turret as a ZBD-86 infantry fighting vehicle. That is, a 30mm gun and one launch rail for a HJ-73 anti-tank guided missile. There are around 600 of the B version and around 550 of the base version in inventory. In addition, there are also around 1500 other wheeled APCs in store. The reconnaissance element of the medium combined arms brigades 
are equipped with an armoured reconnaissance vehicle based on the ZBL-08 chassis. Equipped with the same turret as the ZBD-04 reconnaissance vehicle in the Heavy Combined Arms Brigade, it has a 30mm gun, can launch its own ISR UAVs by way of a folding ramp located behind the turret, and has a telescopic mast fitted with a ground surveillance radar and electro-optical sight. The artillery systems available to the motorised formations mirror those of the heavy armoured units. In terms of self-propelled mortars, this capability is provided by the PLL-05. Armed with a 120mm gun mortar, it has a direct fire range exceeding 1,000 metres and an indirect fire range approaching 13 kilometres. There are around 450 in service. The PLA's early approach to truck-mounted 122mm artillery took the form of the PCL-09. In service since 2009, it features a rear-firing platform. There are around 300 in service. The PCL-09s have largely been replaced by the PLL-09. Armed with a turreted 122mm gun, this is fitted to the ZBL-08 chassis, making it more survivable and providing better off-road mobility than the PCL-09. There are around 600 in service. There are two new wheeled 122mm self-propelled systems coming into service with the PLA motorised formations. One is the 4 x 4 PCL-161, based on the CTM-133 chassis. Armed with the Combined Arms Brigade standard 122mm gun, there are around 120 of these in service. The other wheeled 122mm self-propelled gun is the 6x6 PCL-171. Based on the CTL-181A chassis, it is equipped with the same 122mm gun as found on the PCL-161 and the PLL-09. With 120 in service, these, together with the PCL-161s, will gradually replace the PCL-09s in frontline service. Again, the MLRS in the motorised formations mirror those in the heavy armoured units. Uh, this capability, in earnest, began with the PHL-81 and then the improved PHL-90. Firing 122mm rockets, the PHL carries 40 ready to fire in a single structure and an additional 40 reloads in a container in front of the launcher. Largely replaced in frontline service, there is still around 1,200 in inventory. Replacing the PHL-81-90 is the PHL-11, essentially a wheeled version of the tracked PHZ-11. It is also fitted with two 20-cell pods firing 122mm rockets. Such a system expedites reloading by replacing spent pods with refilled pods loaded by crane from a resupply vehicle. There are around 350 in service. There are two new wheeled 122mm self-propelled MLRS coming into service with the PLA's motorised formations. One is the 4x4 PHL-21, which is based on the CTM-133 chassis. It is armed with the Combined Arms Brigade standard 122mm rocket. The other new wheeled 122mm multiple launch rocket system is the 6x6 PHL-20. Based on the CTL-181A chassis, it is equipped with the same rockets as found on the PHL-21 and PHL-11. These, together with the PHL-21s, will gradually replace the PHL-81-90s not already moved from frontline service. For self-propelled anti-tank guided missile capability, the motorised formation's capabilities are similar to those of the heavier units. Now, although I haven't seen images of the ZBL-08 chassis equipped with the HJ-10 anti-tank guided missiles, it is possible that this system is in service. What is certain is two new wheeled ATGM systems just entering service with the PLA's motorised formations. One is the 4x4 vehicle based on the CTM-133 chassis. It is armed with the HJ-10 long-range anti-tank guided missiles, which can reach out to around 10 kilometres. 
The other new wheeled ATGM system is a 6x6 vehicle based on the CTL 181A chassis. This is also equipped with the HJ10 long range ATGMs. An initial attempt to provide the PLA's motorised formations with an anti-tank capability appeared in the form of the PTL-02 tank destroyer slash assault gun. Entering service around 2001, it is armed with a 100mm smoothbore gun that can also fire anti-tank guided missiles through the gun. Largely removed from frontline units, there are around 250 in inventory. In terms of air defence, the motorised units are equipped with a variety of systems, the newest of which is a gun missile system with an unconfirmed designation. Armed with a 6 barrel 25mm gun with an effective range of around 2,500 metres and four short range surface to air missiles with a range of around 6,000 metres, this system would also provide a useful capability against drones. The missile element of the medium forces includes the HQ-17A, the same system as the HQ-17 found in the heavy armoured units but fitted to a wheeled vehicle. It is armed with eight missiles with a range of up to 15 kilometres. There are around 50 of these in service. These HQ-17As are joined by the HQ-7. Also based on a 6x6 vehicle, it is armed with four missiles with a range of up to 15 kilometres, around 200 of these are in service. As with the heavier formations, the motorised units have a wide range of armoured combat support vehicles, one of which being a mine clearing capability. Based on the ZBL-08, the vehicle is equipped with mine ploughs and mine clearing line chargers. The other engineer support vehicle found in these units is the ZBL-08 based armoured engineer vehicle. It is equipped with a flexible dozer blade and a rotatable extendable arm with bucket and claw. The main armoured recovery vehicle available to the motorised formations is again based on the ZBL-08. These are equipped with a crane, winch and A-frame towing attachment. There are a number of armoured bridge layer vehicles available to the motorised formations. One is based on the ZBL-08 vehicle and uses a scissor-style bridge-laying approach. Another is a 6x6 vehicle based on the CTL-181A chassis. It, however, uses a horizontal-style bridge-laying approach. Fulfilling the remainder of the combat support roles in the medium and motorised formations are vehicles based on the ZBL-08 vehicle with a highly raised hull. These roles include armoured command vehicle, ambulance, signals or communications, and chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear defence, amongst others. A formation that fits between the aforementioned heavy armoured formations and the motorised formations are the Ground Force and Marine Mechanised Amphibious Combined Arms Units. The main direct fire capability of these units is provided by the ZTD-05 assault gun. It is armed with a manually loaded 105mm gun, which can also fire anti-tank guided missiles. There are around 830 in service with the ground force and marines. The primary IFD in these amphibious units is the ZBD-05 armed with a 30mm gun and two HJ-73 anti-tank guided missiles, it carries a full dismount section or squad and has a water speed of around 28 km per hour. There are around 1,000 in service with the ground force and marines. Unlike in the heavy combined arms brigades, the reconnaissance vehicles in the amphibious units do not have a turret nor carry a dismountable reconnaissance element. They are, however, still equipped with a long telescopic mast fitted with a ground surveillance radar and electro-optical sight. They launched their own intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance UAVs by way of a folding ramp located at the rear of the vehicle, which can be also launched while at sea. Moving to artillery systems, the organic gun howitzer batteries in the amphibious units are equipped with the PLZ-07B. 
fitted with the same 122mm gun arm turret as the PLZ-07 found in the heavy combined arms brigades, this vehicle is amphibious, being based on the chassis influenced by the ZBD-05 vehicle. The approximately 100 in service are found in the ground forces amphibious combined arms brigades and the marines heavier formations. A key capability within the amphibious formations is the assault breaching vehicle based on the ZBD chassis. Building on the armoured mine clearing vehicles capabilities, the assault breacher is equipped with mine ploughs, obstacle demolition rockets, mine clearing line charges and marker dispenser. The assault rockets are located in a retractable mount at the front of the vehicle with two launchers for the mine clearing line charges located in an elevated launcher at the rear of the vehicle. The six 62mm obstacle demolition assault rockets have a range of between 200 to 450 metres. As with the other mine clearing vehicles already mentioned, this vehicle employs rocket deployed mine clearing line charges. The other engineer vehicle in the amphibious units, and also based on the ZBD chassis, is equipped with a flexible dozer blade and a rotatable extendable arm with bucket and claw for generic combat engineer tasks. These formations also have amphibious recovery vehicles equipped with a crane, winch and A-frame towing attachment, again based on the ZBD chassis. The last of the ground formations are the light combined arms brigades. Lightly equipped but fast on hard terrain, they are easily transported by aircraft, however they are not airborne or air assault troops. The primary form of mobility for these units are MRAP or Protected Mobility Vehicles PMVs, including the CSK 131, 141 and 181 vehicles. These are augmented by 4x4 truck style PMVs and a newer and larger still 6x6 truck style protected mobility vehicle. As with all other mobile formations covered, the light mobility units have vehicle mounted reconnaissance sensors including ground surveillance radars and electro optical sites. Direct and indirect fire support for these light mobility units is provided by the PCP-001 self-propelled mortar. Armed with an 82mm gun mortar, this has a direct fire range exceeding 1,000 metres and an indirect fire range of almost 8,000 metres. An anti-armour capability is provided by CSK vehicles equipped with the H. J9 anti-tank guided missiles, which have a range of around 5,000 metres. Not to be outdone, the airborne unit's IFV is the ZBD-03. It is fitted with the same turret as the ZBD-86A and the ZSL-92B, being armed with a 30mm gun and one launch rail for the HJ-73 ATGM. A slightly modified version of this without turret acts as an ammunition carrier for the airborne unit's self-propelled mortars. A new addition to the airborne units, the self-propelled 120mm mortar provides critical direct and indirect fire support for the light airborne units. As with many other IFEs or APCs in PLA service, there is a ZBD-03 variant with a raised rear hull that acts as a command vehicle. There is also a logistics vehicle equipped with a crane to lift airdrop pallets onto the rear of the vehicle for transport. Finally, supporting these combined arms formations are the independent artillery brigades. These units have a wide range of combat vehicles comprising both gun and missile systems, both of which at larger calibres than those found in organic to the combined arms brigades. The premier gun howitzer system of the PLA's artillery brigades is the 52 calibre 155mm PLZ05 family, with the latest version having an enlarged turret. Able to fire out to around 50 kilometres with extended range projectiles, 
there are around 320 in service. Still in limited service, but quickly being replaced, is the PLZ-83. The 26 calibre 152mm system is the last of the 152mm self-propelled guns in PLA service. There are around 350 remaining in inventory, and I'd be surprised if these weren't soon sold off. The other gun system in the artillery brigade is the PCL-181. Another relatively new wheeled gun system, it provides far greater mobility, survivability and speed into and out of action compared to towed artillery systems. Equipped with the same weapon as the PLZ-05, around 600 are in service. And finally, the large multiple launch rocket systems. The first of these large systems is the PHL-03. Equipped with 12 300mm rockets, these can range out to around 160 kilometres. There are around 175 of these systems in service. Replacing the PHL-03 is the PHL-16 or 19. A flexible pod design, each of the two pods can be equipped with either 5 300mm or 4 370mm or one 750mm missile. These missiles can range out to 160, 280 or 500 kilometres respectively. There are around 60 of these in service. In summary, the PLA has put into service a comprehensive range of tracked and wheeled combat vehicles covering the full spectrum of capability requirements. Importantly, as far as possible, the PLA looks to develop capabilities on common chassis, developing families of vehicles. This approach delivers significant training and logistics benefits. As I mentioned earlier, I haven't covered self-propelled air defence systems not organic to the combined arms brigades in this briefing. See the separate video linked below for a more detailed briefing on this subject. Well, that concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like and share. Until next time, Fale de Cerro.